So what a trip. What a long, strange, strange trip. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, first, I want to start with uh, just shouting out everyone that sent us money. So yeah. I, I will go through my Venmo. You can go through your, your cash app. But I have uh, Eli, Rhett, Wally, Shauna, Kate, Jan, Zane, David, Weston, Maddie, Sam, Zoe, Aaron, Heather, Colin, Hart, Mary Allison, double first name, nice, Cole, Alex, Sarah, Michael, Bradley, uh, and you have on your cash app? We got Eric, V, Rachel, Stephanie, JJ, shout out JJ, have you back on soon, Brian, Val, thank you, that was it, but yeah, okay. thank you all. And then, uh, yeah, so if, if that was you, um, and I will fact check you on this, but please message me on Instagram because I'm putting together a sticker pack and I owe you for your kindness. We owe you a debt of gratitude that could probably never be repaid, but no. a sticker pack is a small little way of saying thank you. So yes. Anyway, well, how are those stickers going? Um, I'm using stuff from, from older. I mean, I say older, just previously released res- designs as stickers because i feel like this should be timely and also i have somebody requested uh ezra's name tag off of the uh colorado merch as a sticker and i was like oh that's a good one like i should do that and then i'll just go ahead and throw some of those on there but yeah so anyway well where, where to start with this thing man um (laughs) <laughs> i mean you can start with uh <laughs> kansas city <laughs> i mean i was i was thinking with you know iowa but <laughs> yeah it was iowa before oh, wait, no, I, I was it's iowa after, after right yeah. so yeah i guess we had a pretty oh no we could start in st louis <laughs> what happened um, in st louis yeah the first time after our first gas stop when uh we were encountered by a driver of a Mercedes SUV in the oncoming lane yes. on the interstate. Yes. Uh, was a, a sign of good vibes for the trip to come. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that was insane. Um, yeah. And then Kansas City. Uh, yeah. That was. Uh, sorry in advance, Holly, but. Uh, <laughs> And also, sorry, Val, because she made a stop there. But <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you like you couldn't help it. You you didn't see that the the pilot was closed. Like you didn't know that. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, like that was. We we were we had to stop for gas. We had to stop to go to the bathroom and stretch legs. And Val wanted to stop in Kansas because she'd never been to Kansas before. So. Uh, yeah, so you know, we just were like, okay, find a gas station over the border, because uh, we were originally not going through Kansas; we were just kind of going next to it, up Missouri. Yeah, yeah, uh, and so Val just picked the gas station pilot. You know, we we we've stopped at plenty of pilots in our time. Yeah, <laughs> generally fairly clean, well kept establishments. Um, and, and instead. This one, <laughs> Yeah, I'm being charitable here. Instead, we entered the first of many liminal zones. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So we got off. We got off the interstate, and immediately, uh, if if any of you have watched the uh, the new Batman movie with Robert Pattinson, uh, the the scenery was very reminiscent of like the uh, the the chase scene where Batman is chasing the penguin uh just awful vibes really like poorly lit industrial we're like okay um like very know, clean but it this, this pilot. yeah but uh we we kept on going and uh we got there and it was next to and this is a actually a pretty high bar uh and i say this as a lover of waffle house but the sketchiest waffle house i've ever seen <laughs> yeah. uh and 
it was uh, permanently closed. So that was cool. So then went down the strip to uh, to uh, the quick trip, and uh, it was clean and it was it was fine. Uh, and there was a, a cop in there that came in that looked like he was like ready to oh, deploy yeah. to a foreign country. I was yep. like, oh, so it's like that around here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, so then we we got out of there as, as fast as we could, and that was that was around what that was like midnight ish. Yeah, I also noted that the cop w- it was KCKPD, like they got to yeah. uh, <laughs> specify even that out. they're not from Missouri, yeah. even though it's the city is called Kansas City. It is kind of dumb how they they did that, but you know whatever. Um, so yeah, got out of there and then um, up the uh, the western edge of Missouri into iowa beautiful scenic iowa <laughs> lovely iowa <laughs> yeah where uh you know i i should have stopped for gas at the the last possible point in missouri but i was like oh no we we can we can make it uh, <laughs> we could we did we did we make did it. um <laughs> Technically. but we, so we got off at, at exit one in iowa for hamburg iowa um not a shout out to hamburg uh, <laughs> the main road into the town was closed so it had us uh, you know it that was not reported on the map as well so we had to take another road uh that was just it was railroad road i remember that Damn. uh and it was just a gravel road really like, okay gravel road whatever fine we're in we're in my land cruiser like no big deal and uh then it wanted us to where where the gravel road turned. It wanted us to keep going straight on a road literally called Dirt Lane, <laughs> um, which is a lie. <laughs> it was a lie. It should have been called Mud Lane, yeah. which we realized maybe a little too late. <laughs> a little but, too late, uh, but pretty quickly. Pretty quickly, and uh, yeah. So had to had to back out of mud with uh, really bad backup lights. Yeah, at um, about one a.m. At one a.m um that was that was the first you know <laughs> the the oncoming driver that was just another day in st louis this was <laughs> the first real like adrenaline rush of the trip yeah. um it was like oh this is like very serious uh, <laughs> yeah. you know potentially trip ruining territory right here so <laughs> thankfully uh was able to get us out shout out elsie yeah shout out Shout out to my beautiful, beautiful 2007 Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, still has some mud from Hamburg, Iowa on it, even though I took it through the car wash. Hell yeah. Uh, really caked on there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then we drove, uh, what, like another seven or eight miles with the air conditioning off. Yeah. <laughs> um, saving gas, uh, going like 45 and a 55 to get to the gas station that thankfully was was open it was like 10 miles back to town and 15 to the next gas station on the route (laughs) yeah yeah we were it was it was it was the right it was the right judgment call um so back on the road and at that point shoot i think the gas station was like uh i can check the the time stamp on the picture here but i think it was like three um also, shout out to you. You drove for like 18 hours straight out of Nashville I, all the yeah. way to somewhere in South Dakota. I am built slightly different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, so that was that was three when we were at that gas station in, in Iowa. Um, and then made uh, a pit stop in the beautiful, beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. My first time in Nebraska. It was my first time in Iowa. First time in Kansas. First time in Nebraska. Out of all of those, I think uh, I think I like Nebraska the best. Wow. Uh, well, I did on the way there. <laughs> on the way there, yeah. Uh, stopped by Omaha. Oh uh, got to got to support my Vols. Uh, yeah. Who are the College World Series champions for 2024? Very hyped on that. Go Vols! Uh, but yeah, so we did that, and then that was like four, I think, and then the the sun started coming up when we were back in Iowa as uh we started modern vampires listening to obvious bicycle uh while the sun's coming up cover ground that was exactly what we did um which was very sick very beautiful sunrise in western Iowa um 
yeah, good vibes. Kept going to uh, Sioux Falls. Yeah, Sioux Falls. Um, stopped at a what we thought was a combination caribou coffee. Einstein Brothers <laughs> was not. Uh, nope. It was a caribou coffee that served prepackaged Einstein Brothers items. Yes, my bad. No, 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 no. It was it, it was what I needed. Uh, <laughs> maybe not what I wanted, but what I needed. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then until I guess like if we started driving at like two thirty ish, I guess until eight thirty. So that was somewhere in the middle of South Dakota. That was when I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta switch off here because there was those insane roadworks where it would just oh, go yeah. down to one side of the highway so often, and those just zapped me, man. Like those were ridiculous. They were in so uh, many states too. Yeah, it, I mean, it was. I guess it was really just the the. Well, the, did Nebraska have them too? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Nebraska did. On the way back. Four, four of the 11 states that we went to, which just happened to also be like the four of the, the four that we had the longest driving. Yes. Trip, <laughs> which, love that for us. But yeah. yeah then, uh, <laughs> it was like seven states and then this, like for half of the drive and then the other half was South yeah. Dakota and Montana. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So yeah, made it to the middle of South Dakota and then you took over while I slept, so... Take it away. I don't even remember the drive up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> the drive Just back. Thing between where we stopped and Wall. Um, pretty boring. Yeah. Uh, it's South Dakota. Uh, it was raining really it, hard. Oh yeah, it was raining really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. first time driving your car and it's just pouring rain, and I'm like, all yeah. right, I'll do like sixty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it yeah. <laughs> but yeah so then we we made it to wall um beautiful beautiful town scenic beautiful town one of one of the great towns one, one of one, the one, towns one of the towns yeah um of south dakota <laughs> yeah saw wall drug uh, yep. that was there we were there uh, oh yeah we also went to the corn palace yeah kind of kind of weird vibes but yeah so then made, made it to wall got out of wall Badlands, pretty tight. Badlands, pretty tight. Yeah, first time in Badlands. Um, good opening national park for a trip. For sure, yeah. Yeah, good good opener. Uh, saw, saw a dude in the gift shop wearing a, a Twiddle hoodie. Uh, so shout out to that guy. He uh, listens. <laughs> very strong hoodie choice. Um, and then we, what, stopped in... Rapid City for dinner. Is that? <sighs> yeah, that was Rapid. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was Rapid Where'd we City. go for dinner? Oh, we, we went, went to that, to that bar. bar. Yeah. Yeah. Which solid, solid burger? Solid burger. Yeah. Um, a lot of burgers this trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're in the West, I guess it's a safe choice. Yeah. Well, what was it? It was a. Uh, because I feel like we should let the people know. also insane beer list. Um. What was that bar? No clue. Well, bar in Rapid City. Yeah. If you're ever you. in Rapid City, type in bar. It's one of those. One of those. Um, yeah, and then camped in Wyoming. For yeah, the night Beulah. In eastern Wyoming. Outside Beulah. Met Bear. Yes. Bear. One of the first of several. Well, I guess only of two that we met, but people living in uh, VW buses. Yeah. Slash fans. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bear just came right up and started talking to us, which was uh, felt unusual, but by the end didn't feel that unusual. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, yeah. Pa paint us a little picture here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's a great campsite in Beulah if you're ever there. It's near, uh, it's about an hour from Devil's Tower, uh, right on the creek. Um, right next to the pit toilet is where we camped. Um, yeah, the creek was beautiful. Everybody's vibe was really good. Like, it could seem scary for a big man <laughs> to come and talk to you at camp, and it might have like dragged on a little bit, but he was super nice, chill vibes. Yeah. I love to meet people. Um, 
he he's not a vampire weekend head. I tried to give him a ticket, but he didn't want to go. Yeah. No, but uh cool dude. Uh just a very interesting guy to meet at a campsite. I mean Yeah. Pretty tall. Tall, long very long beard. Yeah. Has definitely been living in his car for a very long time. Yeah. But yeah, shout out there. You're not listening. You probably don't even know what a podcast is. No, but... it's never been on the internet. No. But shout out to shout out to you. Yeah. So then yeah, had one of the best nights of sleep of my life. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Every <laughs> night of sleep on this trip was like fantastic. <laughs> we dude, we were all so wiped. Yeah. Like insanely. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I mean, I got sleep when you were driving a little bit, but I was also, like you said, first time you drove my car, it's pouring down rain. Yeah. I'm only switching off because I have to. I'm, like, low-key terrified. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I got some sleep here and there, but I was I was opening my eyes every now and then, making sure yeah. we were still alive <laughs> on the correct side of the highway. I mean, um, as long as we're in South Dakota and not Missouri, I'll stay Exactly, inside. yeah uh and then so next day wake up hit devil's tower it's raining yep starts raining as soon as we park too. Yeah. devil's tower tight um very large souvenir shop uh i was a oh, uh, yeah. model for uh for some greeting cards um look at look for me i, I don't know what greeting card company they'll works for but look at me on look look for me on their their promo material um and then it was pretty much well we stopped in billings for lunch um is that where you went to good times the combination good times taco oh, john that was no no no, no. That, at 9 the, the combination good times and taco johns that was i believe not not cheyenne wyoming that was gillette wyoming mm. uh first time at good times first time at taco john's first time at which I saw this on the Wikipedia page because I was looking at their Wikipedia page. One of two extant Damn. combination Taco Johns and Good Times. In wow. We got to go to the other one now. <laughs> Real, yeah, that's my Starbucking is just going to both <laughs> combination Good Times and Taco Johns. Yeah, had a actually really solid burger at 930 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I went up to the cashier. I was like, is the whole menu served right now? And she was like, yeah. I was like, this isn't a like, dumb that's question. That's a crazy lady. thing. <laughs> yeah, so I did that. Uh, that was good. Yeah, and then ate lunch in Billings. Like, I, I have to say, people in, you know what, I'll lump in South Dakota, too. Because I don't, I don't remember seeing anyone else on the road ever in Iowa. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll lump in South Dakota. South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming. Great drivers very like polite like you know other than that one guy in wyoming on the way back but was that uh, are you talking about the guy who was driving crazy or the guy at the gas station oh yeah okay well fine south dakota and montana good drivers yeah <laughs> <laughs> well we'll get to that uh yeah, yeah so <sighs> stop your lunch in billings and then pretty much straight shot to uh, Missoula without incident. Just yeah. beautiful scenery along the way. Oh, yeah. That last bit of the drive is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Highly, highly. I mean, even like up to the Continental Divide. But like certainly from the Continental Divide to Missoula on I-90. Incredible. Um, yeah. So then we, we met up with uh, Holly. Holly, uh, Rachel. At dinner. Uh, met who was that guy? People. The the guy that you met that you sold the ticket to. Oh, I didn't get his name. I don't think he was just some old guy who noticed we were wearing the vampire shirts and came to talk about it because he had been yeah. at the Seattle shows, at the Seattle show, and then randomly he had to drive his kid. I think yeah, it was yeah, for yeah. A college yeah. visit. Um, to Missoula, and he was like, "Oh, they're playing there too," and I was like. I got, yeah, I got some extra tickets. Shout out to that guy. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to that guy. He bought my tickets that I thought I would have to give away. Thank you. I was I was giving them to him and he was like, <laughs> "What do I owe you?" And I was like, "Well, 
I mean, if you <laughs> if you want, you know. Yeah. yeah. You look like you so, have money. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> dinner, dinner in Missoula. Missoula, like when we got there, I mean, just beautiful. Like mid seventies. Beautiful. Just um, perfect. I didn't expect it to have like a bustling downtown, but when we arrived Friday night, like yeah. every single restaurant yeah. was totally and full. Parking was the one we got to pretty full. Like, yeah, it was a little, it was a little nuts. Uh, yeah, and then so after dinner, I took Val to where she was staying in Missoula. <laughs> oh yeah, that was our first. Yeah, and then uh, that was yeah, that was where actually the, uh... it did crop up a little bit. On the drive there, we started to get the battery. That's true, but it was nothing. It was nothing crazy. So yeah, on, on between somewhere between Billings and Missoula, uh, we did get a warning light about the battery voltage. Uh, but you know, as other things have on the past with my car and plenty of others, it fixed <laughs> itself. Uh, as those yeah. things do. Yeah. And so I didn't really think anything of it. We had a bunch of stuff plugged into cigarette lighters. We were over the wattage limit. I was like, okay, it's probably that. So unplugged all that stuff. It fixed itself. We're like, okay, great. So I, I dropped Val off. Uh, and then I had to go get gas. And as I'm pulling into the gas station, uh, the radio starts sounding weird. And things start flickering. And Ooh. all of a sudden, my my battery voltage gauge is like at the bottom. I'm like, oh, this isn't this isn't good, and it's like nine fifty, uh, which you know the the sun's still out. It's beautiful. I have beautiful scenery to get broken down in. Uh, I just like kept the car running while I was pumping gas, which don't don't do that. But I also didn't want to get stranded, <laughs> so I made it to. And O'Reilly Auto Parts in Missoula, like five minutes before they closed. And uh, I was like, hey, do you guys have a battery tester? And he was like, yeah. So he came out and and checked it. And literally, like in the space, because I left it running in the parking lot too, which again, maybe not advisable, but I didn't want it to die. You know, (laughs) I don't, I don't, I want to wake, I want to wake up and make breakfast instead of waking up and having to go to the Toyota dealer in the morning. And so like I, he tests the battery, it's fine, whatever. And then I get back in the, the, the gauge is back to normal. Like, okay, like just, it's just weird, but like, we're going with it. It's fine. Like it's, it's fixed itself. So yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it was fine. It'll last 1500 miles. Yeah, surely. And uh, so, yeah, you know, uh, other than that, like, not really eventful. Got to the campsite. Um, yeah, had a had a real fun time finding that. Why don't you clue us in there? The camps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Google Maps is fun. Um, <laughs> so there's an app called iOverlander. If you're uh, out there on the road and you don't have it, you should get it. It's a good database of free campsites. And we found a great free campsite that's like, on top of a not a mountain exactly but like a foothill looking over the valley looking over i-90 like 10 minutes 15 minutes from the venue and uh google maps even though it knows where that is took us to somebody's house and had us almost go up somebody's driveway where we almost certainly would have been shot for trespassing um, and then as soon as we turned around, Google Maps was like, oh, yeah, no, that's not where it is. It's actually right here. And uh, then we found it. And then <laughs> Rachel Randolph, shout out, uh, had a similar problem, but ended up going like five miles up yeah, the mountain. Yeah, through the stuff that we were around. like, oh, yeah, I think we should turn around. Like, let's In the let's night? be polite to Rachel and like not yeah. make oh. her go through this in a rental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we also, we're coming up this road, because also, we get turned around from the house, and then we're going up the mountain, which feels right, but we pass, like, one guy camping, and we're like, yeah, we could probably camp there, and we keep going, and then there's just, like, an old Dodge van, and it was black, with all the lights and it, out, and it's like, we are yeah. not, we're not gonna just stop very, by these vans. <laughs> not yeah. kosher-looking situation. Not not kosher and then we we turn like to go up the mountain and there's these giant puddles and we're like oh we can't send rachel through these puddles 
because she's just in like a rental car. Well, turns out she went through the puddles. Yeah. <laughs> Us nah, in the we Land should, Cruiser were like, but, oh, no. Nah, yeah, so made it made it back down to where that, that guy originally was. Um. Yeah. Second guy to just As walk right up, up to us at the campsite. Um, slightly cursed vibes, but I think he was actually... He said that he was camping with his wife and child, who we never saw. Uh, he did have two. But surely very, they very, were there and dogs. alive. I will give him that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. And sweet behavior. Yeah, so, so props to him for that. But yeah, so we, we camped there for the night and then uh, woke up. Had breakfast, um, and then I guess did we did we go straight there from straight straight to the venue from there? No swap meet. Oh yeah, swap meet. Yeah, uh, legendary swap meet. Um, yeah, some guy showed up. None of us knew. Yeah, which yeah, I guess I guess we covered swap meet in previous episode, but yeah. Um, and then basically straight from the swap meet to line up for the show was which mistake, was but... a mistake because it was like the show started at 7 30 and i think we got there at about two yeah that's that sounds right and we just sat without shade for about five hours drinking a couple beers which doesn't help crashed a wedding at the brewery yeah we crashed yeah <laughs> the kettle house amphitheater is attached to the kettle house brewery and I guess they host weddings, but like it's not a private affair. No, not at all. No, we were very confused as to why there was like a old timey quintet playing there, and then some people like dressed nicely showed up, and we were like, "What?" And then a woman showed up in a wedding dress, and we're like, "Oh, we're just at a wedding at a brewery." Cheap way to get Vampire Weekend to play your wedding. Yeah, for the low low price of eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, well, less because they just had to buy some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the low, low price of uh, about twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, then show one. Show one. Um. As I said earlier, I felt close to death for most of the time leading up to the show. Yeah, it was but I survived, cool. and it's one of my greatest accomplishments. <laughs> Put it on the gravestone. Yeah. It's like when you're like <laughs> so drunk that you're about to die, but like you pull through for a night. Yeah, it was similar to that, except it was just hot. Yeah, it was it was very brutal. I mean, it was like at elevation too. Like the the heat is so much worse, and it was like what like mid to high eighties. Yeah, and just direct sunlight yeah. on the pit. Cloudless until like, day until like forty minutes into the set. Yeah. too, it was just direct sunlight. Yeah. Um, but we survived. We survived. We got a great show. Great show. Um, and then back to oh, I guess yeah, our other campsite in between the swap meet and going to the show. Did we go out that night? Huh? Yeah, we went to a cl- we went to a bar that night. Oh, I remember we got meant, there like, right before oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they closed yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. So we were. Re- I, who recommended that? I don't know. I don't remember. But yeah, Tom. I think we just went downtown and found a place. Thomas Meager Pub in downtown Missoula. Another solid burger. Another solid burger. And shout out, thank you for making it 10 minutes before uh, you close the kitchen. And Yes. I didn't taste any spit. No, no. It was, it was delightful. Hit the spot. Then back to our second camp, or I guess third campsite of the trip, second campsite in Missoula. Um, somebody's farm in what some of the time of the year is a sheep pasture um just next to someone's driveway (laughs) Um, no complaints though like no apparently i booked this through hip camp i think is what it's called it's basically just airbnb for campsites people can just like let you sleep on their land which is a great idea we didn't have to check in or anything we just went there set up our tents came back after the show and slept it was great Another great night of sleep. Yes. Um, yeah, and then I guess we went straight to the venue on Sunday. Pretty much. Yeah. Or did we? No, we stopped to get sunscreen. Yeah, we got. <laughs> we bought an aerosol can of sunscreen that I had to throw away when I entered the venue. Yeah. Yeah. 
and then got to see the best vampire show of our lives on Sunday. Yep. We went to go swim in the river. Shout out Skylar for the tip. Yes. Shout out Skylar. Thank you for coming on the pod. Yes. Yeah, so went swimming with uh with Skylar and um uh who else was there? Rachel, Holly, Val. Yeah. Showed up. Forget. Eli showed up like right when we were leaving. <laughs> who were the other two guys? Um forget their name. I'm so sorry if you're listening to this, but I, I am blanking. I meet I've met too many people at, uh, in Texas and in Montana. I just cannot remember. And now we're going to we're going to meet more people other places. But yeah, grilled up some burgers next to the next to the river, like truly an immaculate vibe. Uh was living for that. Yeah, Rhett was there. Rhett was there, yeah. So that was great and then um yeah, we we should honor our fallen comrade Val. Val. Yes. Uh who departed from us at this point. And so hitched it back to Missoula with Rachel. Which shout out Rachel again. Shout out Rachel just in general. Great great camping partner as well. Just Yes. Just great. Can't wait to a uh, road trip with, with you, Rachel. And I'm gutted that I will be missing that. Cincinnati, indeed. Well, St. Louis or Chicago. I'm I am very sad about that. Um but yeah, so then uh on to on to Glacier and uh stopped at that gas station with the giant cow. That was yeah. that was a which I had been to that gas station before. Um and when I was there before the cow was smaller they've gotten a, a larger cow since then just wait till next year yeah next year i'm hoping that they need to buy more property because the cow is too large for there to still be a gas station there so they have to like relocate it that's what i'm hoping for yeah um, there's like a guy at the gas station who's like finally alexander came back <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have an even bigger cow next time add to cart <laughs> yeah <laughs> So yeah, then we took uh, one of my favorite roads, like, pro- well, for sure one of my favorite roads I've ever driven, uh, Montana Highway 83, uh, past, I believe, Sealy Lake, which, yeah. Yeah, I mean, was that not, like, one of the most beautiful drives? The, the uh, everything in western Montana is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. But yeah. It is... I mean, it's my, it's, it truly is like my, my favorite place in the world. Um, and so, you know, saw mountains, saw lakes, got to see that incredible sunset at that thing that we just like happened to turn off at, um, like that, it was like a service road, but there was like actually like a, it was like, Oh, I don't know if we should go down here. Cause it said like, wait for a, p-. you were just like, nah, just go on. It's fine. And, uh, there was like, that Oh whole, yeah, yeah. Like informational display about like some sort of bird, I think. Uh, but that, that place was awesome. Um, and then kept going onto glacier and pulled into the parking lot at Apgar village around like 11. And I mean, were you prepared for that view? I mean, I will say I was slightly prepared for the view because I've been dreaming of going to Glacier National Park for like half a decade now. Yeah. Um, but it it lives up to it. Yeah. For sure. It is. Um, and seeing it at night for the first time was great. That you could still see all the mountains. I mean, the sky is so clear with the stars and the moon, but the water is so still. It's beautiful. Um, this was my first time camping in a tent in grizzly bear country and part of me was slightly nervous about it but by the time we got there i was just like whatever happens happens." yeah i've seen this i can die happy (laughs) yeah yeah no i was i don't know i was like weirdly like not worried about the bears i don't know maybe that's like maybe that's foolish of me but it's probably foolish but also like two larger guys like generally we're gonna be fine yeah yeah no so i like you know keep the bear spray in the tent and like everything's fine 
Uh, and also, like, we were we were in the middle of, like, a very populated camping area. Sure, but that just makes me nervous because I'm like, there's just no way every single one of you actually locked up all of your food. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good point, actually. But, yeah, the beautiful campsite would camp there again. Ap- Apgar Campground in Glacier. I mean... If I went back, I, w- I would want to camp somewhere else, but, like, I would also camp there again, for yeah. sure. Well, I, I, we also, we did have cell signal, which, like, yeah, you know, part of not. you is, like, yeah, you don't want that, but also, because Glacier, notoriously bad cell coverage, uh, but weirdly, like, I had, I had 5G at the campsite. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, compared to uh, the last time I was up near that area, the cell service seems a lot better. Yeah. Which- is bad but also awesome so. yeah a double double edged sword for sure so got it got another great night of sleep yes and which I, i'll go ahead and say it we were in the car for five thousand miles we did not sleep in a bed for eight days we i showered twice yeah, yeah. i showered once <laughs> i showered twice you showered once and my back is fine same like no i which i i'm very very happy about that um yeah, but yeah my so, back has hurt in the last couple of days from sleeping in a regular bed and i just want to be outside again sleeping on a sleeping bed you know yeah but not in tennessee <laughs> no <laughs> it's really fucking hot right now <laughs> specifically in western montana but you know what do what we can uh yeah so day day in glacier uh, the last time I had checked the going to the Sun Road, which is like the the main thoroughfare through Glacier. I mean, it's like the only road through Glacier uh, was closed, and that was like the the day the day that we left. I think it was closed, and I mean, I wanted to keep going because I mean, even just the parts that aren't on like the Alpine section, which is the part that gets closed are really beautiful and you know you can just go around to the other side of the park and just go in and like get up to that point and you know you've seen i guess probably like 40 percent of the park and it's still some of the most beautiful things you've ever seen i mean not even close to 40 percent of the park if you look at the map but i know what you mean yeah it feels like 40 percent. i don't know the uh the drivable part yeah yeah Yeah. the yes 40 percent of the drivable part that's yeah, that's that's more correct. But yeah, so I was like, okay, we'll just keep driving until the road closes, and then we can turn around, go back, go th- you know to the other side of the park, and do the same thing. And as luck would have it, the road would never never closed. So we got to do the whole thing, uh, which was, I mean, it's the greatest. It is like words fail to describe how beautiful that is. Um, I would agree with you and say that it's like on par with Zion National Park, which I unfortunately just still need. It's like it's like Zion of the North. They're different, but like very similar in some ways, and just totally mind blowing. Next time, vampire plays Salt Lake, maybe. Yeah, that's a massive. That's about. That's probably a bigger detour than Glacier, but we'll do it. Yeah, we we'll do it live. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got to see the entire drivable portion of the park, and then also many glaciers. Yeah, we got in before a reservation was required to see many glacier, which I I had I'd been to Glacier before, and this is like honestly, like I I if you're listening to this, you and just the fact that I'm on here tells you that like i love vampire weekend a lot but (laughs) going to glacier was like half the reason i wanted to do this trip and i had never even been to mini glacier before and that was i mean just insanely beautiful uh saw a brown bear while we were in there um very close to the car too yes very close uh also, like we, it was like kind of the perfect time too, because there were not like a ton of people there. Like it was compared to Yellowstone, especially. But like, yeah, I think the only like really crowded areas were like in the middle of the day. 
the hikes. Logan yeah. Pass was crowded. And then Avalanche, which is like a campground and there's a trail there. That was pretty yep. crowded. But other than that, like nothing was like insanely trafficked. Yeah. I got a very sorry. I got a very solid smoked trout sandwich. Oh hell yeah. Avalanche, that was near Avalanche. That was very I had a, a very good breakfast burrito as well. It was very, which I, I, you know, I, I feel like I have low expectations for food inside national parks. I was blown away. Had some mountain brews at that lunch. Uh, yep. At the foot of some mountains it was it was very tight. And then we uh, went to the Loop Trail, back through uh, the other side of the park. Yeah. Not like a super special trail, but we needed to get out and hike a little bit. Yeah, because I, I, and this is just foolish, uh, born at sea level. Um, <laughs> but I, I was like, oh, like a six mile hike. That's perfectly doable. I didn't think about the fact that there would be six miles at, you know, 4,000 feet of elevation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And anyway, the, the the hike that I wanted to do was at that avalanche trailhead, and like everybody was parked there, so I was like, "Well, I guess that's kind of out." So we went to this this loop trail, did like two miles on that. Beautiful views, beautiful views. Uh, no bears, no bears. We scared them all off with Blake's got a new face. Yes, we did do that. Um, yeah, and then we we went back down. And then kind of just hung out around camp for a little bit, made dinner. Um, and then originally we were going to go out at sunset because I wanted to take some more pictures and just see Glacier at sunset because I, I, you know, I'd only ever been like really during the day. Um, but we were both like getting a little tired. And I was like, oh, wait, let's just go out like at golden hour and then we can catch sunset on the way down. And that was the right decision yep um stopped off at that bridge saw a couple of people getting married which was cool um and then as we got further up like into the alpine section saw another two people getting married uh saw some bighorn sheep. mountain goats yeah very tight um and then we got up to logan pass which is like the the highest like drivable point in the park which actually like the curve, like two curves, like right before that, the most like beautiful sunset of my life. Um, which that's another really awesome thing about like doing that when we did is like as we're going up, the sun just unsets, but from behind, the yeah, room, yeah, we got up higher, and that was like you know, it, we got to see like seven sunsets that night, it was insane. So we got up to Logan Pass, uh, and there was a trail that we had talked about hiking uh earlier but it was covered in snow so we were like oh like let's i guess we'll just find something else we did not have the shoes no we thought. and so but we got up there and we were like you know what let's just go go do it yeah some well actually on the loop trail hike we ran into this couple yeah and they were like oh are you going all the way and we were like no and they were like it's worth it we were like yeah and they were talking to us a little bit and they were like oh well you should at least do that like other hike and we were like it's snow covered and they're like there's people doing it in flip-flops you'll be fine yeah so we were like okay let's just do that so grabbed a couple of mountain brews yep. and of course uh, banquet restarted the the hashtag mountain brews challenge restarted i mean i think it was a, a thi- like a brief thing on tiktok during covid i it was i think it was briefly discussed tc maybe um but yeah that was one of like my favorite experiences of all time was like same trudging through the snow up to that view while the sun's setting drinking a beer with my buddy like that was just elite yes um, Highly recommend if you ever find yourself in Glacier, grab a beer, go up there during sunset, have a mountain brew. Yeah, do the brew. Do the brew. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, I've had a couple people be like, I'm I'm going. Or one person was like, I'm going to Glacier, so I'm going to do the challenge. And then like one other person was like, I'm going to do the challenge somewhere else. I'm excited to see these. Make sure. I hope they I hope they tag us. Yeah, please remember. Yes. Don't forget. This is more important than whatever else you were originally going there for. So I don't even like Vampire Weekend. I'm just trying to get this started. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to encourage more people to drink beer on top of mountains. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this is. This is a an outreach podcast for that. Yeah. Uh yeah. So that was I mean, that was one of like truly I cannot think of a better Monday I've ever had than that day. Um that was that was better than a lot of Fridays I've had. Like that was <laughs> that was better than probably like ninety nine percent of Fridays I've had. Uh, just a really incredible day, and of course, no no car trouble during the day. Everything was fine. Everything was great. Life yeah. was good. God bless that too. Like the car trouble hit, but like it didn't hit when we were like still driving away from home. Yeah, which I like <laughs> yeah, which you know, thank very thankfully. Yeah, imagine if that had hit at the top of the pass or something. Yeah, that would have been. I mean, you know, at least we would have been on a downhill, but without yeah. power steering or brakes. <laughs> Maybe not the best thing. Um, but yeah, so we did that and then drove down and got to see the sun kind of like resetting again, which was I mean, there there I words cannot describe pictures do not do justice no if you are listening to this if you have the means go to glacier national park just do it you will thank yourself like it is it's incredible the the dialogue in the car most of the time we were there was basically wow yeah oh yes yeah fuck yes yeah (laughs) like that's good stuff yeah um I, I mean, it's hard not to because it's just incredible. There's um, little else to say, honestly. There is Words not a not lot match it. else to say except just exclamations of wonderment. And then, so yeah, got another great night of sleep. Uh, that was maybe the best night, that sleep. That probably was the best night, which is a Slept high, a little a bit. high bar. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very high bar. Uh, and then we, we got up and then went over to us highway 89 which is supposedly the most scenic highway in america and uh it was it was solidly scenic very very pretty and then made it all the way to 90 i-90 again and then drove over to where 89 continued into yellowstone yep Second time in Yellowstone. Um, I, w- I mean, the first time I went to Yellowstone, I was there for a little bit longer. I got to see, like, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. That, I mean, very little compares to that. But we went down the other side of Yellowstone. Kind of because I had requested it. Because when I went to Yellowstone last time, we got snowed out of driving the full loop of the park. Um, and, like, I guess the scenery on that side isn't quite as good. We didn't get to see the uh, the painted lake or whatever it's called because the crowd was insane. Yeah. Also, um, those people but, getting out of their car like five yards from a bison. Yes, like ten cars parked on the side of the road to get out to take pictures of like six bison that were right alongside of the road. It's like, dude, you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, people just not being smart. But I guess even before that, though, was. Our first, uh, our oh first, yeah, <laughs> our first hiccup of the day. So our first hiccup. <laughs> we were I, I was driving and uh, you were like, oh dude, there's like a a seven thousand foot canyon or cliff. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh okay, sick. Like let's go see it. <laughs> what it didn't say on the map was that it was at like sixty eight hundred feet of elevation and it was like a the top of the cliff was 7,000 feet. Which, yeah. like, and it was just alongside the road. Yeah. Like, we got out, and they were like, look over there. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. But then... Uh, as, we're, as we pull off, yeah. the engine well, starts to pull- run real rough. The... Uh, yeah, it just... Uh, the car does not particularly want to start. Um, 
so we just kind of look at each other and uh decided to like let it be for 15 20 minutes yeah i was like well one thing we can do is just wait a little bit <laughs> yeah i mean that it, it worked before it worked that time yeah and it worked then so we were back on the road a little a little cautious but like you know, it was fine. uh we little fun fact for you since you're still driving elsie that wasn't the problem that we fixed no we actually we we didn't even I, I i don't know that there even is a problem with that now because it yeah <laughs> hasn't happened yeah. i mean you're at sea level now yeah we're it's it's we're just gonna say it's fine i'll worry about that's a later problem <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's like an electric car. Sometimes you park, you gotta wait a little bit. <laughs> Everyone knows this. Everyone knows this. Common problems. Yeah. <laughs> so we got back driving again. Saw the the silly people, the silly billies. Uh, you know, next to the bison. Yeah. Yeah. Not dead. R- rest yet. in peace. <laughs> yeah, they're dead now. One of them statistically might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then. The the big attraction we saw in Yellowstone, we get to Old Faithful, and I had never, I had didn't see that part of the park last time I was there, so I wanted to go see it, but I was like, it's every hour and a half or so, we're not going to wait around for an hour and a half. Yeah. Literally, we walk up to it, and it starts bursting. Yeah. It was insane. It was pretty awesome, which actually, last time I was there, uh, the only other time I was there, we went to go see it, and it, it you know, it it went up, but it was like very like lame honestly like it oh was yeah not, it was very unenthusiastic yeah uh, i was quite impressed it was like yeah it looked like this 100 time feet. this yeah. time was real like really great um like that was that was very very cool to see like i feel like i, I got kind of got that box checked now yeah, um, yeah. and then we went to um which yeah this is like kind of a i mean it's marked on the map but like not a super heavily trafficked spot but very beautiful uh firehole falls which was a really it's a nice little detour off the main road um just very pretty series of waterfalls which we are both huge waterfall appreciators yes have got more fans. than our fill that trip for sure and then uh, it was onwards to the Tetons. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so how how many times does the Continental Divide go through Yellowstone again? Is it like four or five? I feel like we crossed it three times. Okay. But it was also like the first time it was like 6,500 6, feet, and then it was like yeah. 7,500 feet, and then it was 8,700 feet or yeah. something. Well, where we... Where we were so uh, unceremoniously and conveniently stopped was uh, at 8,300 feet. 83, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we got to the top and... Which was probably the highest we went in the car. About, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Last crossing might have been 87. The last crossing of the Divide, I think, might have been 87. But... Yeah, so <laughs> we got to the top, and you know, obviously, people are driving pretty <laughs> slow. So I I get close to basically just idle, and the car does not like that. It does not. It like does it. not like it at all. And so, thankfully, I had like just enough momentum and arm strength to had no power steering or brakes and thankfully like nobody oncoming i was able to like, there get was off the road um and just in a really bad spot in like a pull-off like blocking two people from the house <laughs> <laughs> who were very gracious um so yeah we the, it was at um what can't be what what is one of what can't be many if any more lakes or water sources that drain to both sides of the continental divide which was cool because we were a little confused it's very like unimpressive looking and there's just like a a bulletin board next to it and it's like why is this like a stop off and then on the bulletin board it's like yeah it drains into the atlantic and pacific i was like oh that's that's cool this is good information to know while i'm waiting for my car to fix itself again 
which thankfully it did. Um, yeah. And again, not the problem that we had fixed. No, no, not not the problem that that was. Uh, it was a, it was a symptom for sure. Um, and so you know, again, just wait another five ten minutes. It had fixed itself again. Um, and we started the long way to Grand Teton. Um, beautiful drive, but kind of ruined by how insanely stressed out I was <laughs> yeah. about and like high altitude, not only from there to Grand Teton, but from there to like Nebraska. Yeah, very like unexpected. Uh, I yeah. mean, well, like it shouldn't have been if I had done literally any research on that, but that wasn't something I thought I had to research. So, Wyoming's up there. Wyoming is way up there. Um, so yeah, d- just edge of my seat the whole drive to to Teton, and then we, <laughs> oh yeah, we tried to go to that visitor center, and that was, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we pull off. <laughs> And the guy's just like, there's a guy in a safety vest blocking a road, and you're like, is the visitor center open? And he was like, I don't know, I just work here or something. No, and it's he, like, right. I, I like, believe we're the asking. Word he said were, I work for the road. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, I don't Which work for the thing. Park. I work for the road. I was like, okay, nobody man. works for the road. <laughs> oh, and that, that was after we went through that traffic jam because there was a grizzly. There were people lined up along both sides of the road for probably like a quarter mile, and of course, people just have to park in the road. Yeah, and it's like, right. Pull in front over of a sign that says "No stopping," no less. And the whole I think time we were about to close that road too. The whole time I'm just like waiting for my car to die while we're right next to a grizzly bear. It's like, well, you know, we've had a good trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but thankfully, it did not. Um, beautiful grizzly bear beautiful grizzly bear Um, glimpsed another grizzly bear a little bit later yeah after we did uh what was that after after we did uh jenny lake yeah yeah so yeah jenny lake beautiful got to might have been the same grizzly bear it could have been it was long enough it probably could have been yeah jenny lake was beautiful um i'd been there before uh highly recommend there's like a, a very nice like kind of I actually think it's a I think it's Firehole Canyon actually that or no that's something anyway there's a uh there's a where where two of the mountains in the Teton range meet just this beautiful valley and the sun was setting like right directly in the middle of that pass and that was pretty pretty insane to see yeah wasn't one of them called like Death Canyon Oh yeah yeah that, there was, there was like a can- <laughs> it was like two canyons over it was called like Death Canyon. It's like, it's like yeah, I want to go there. Yeah, let's let's just go there. Um, yeah, and then so we were we were met with a, a choice, which probably the most important choice of the entire trip that we made, um, was either going to Debose, which is uh, kind of like directly west of the Tetons. Uh, or going to Jackson, which is like kind of what I don't know, thirty miles south ish, if that, yeah, pretty close of, of the Tetons. Um, but all of the gas station. This is like at what I don't know, eight, eight, nine, eight, nine. yeah, yeah. All I think we the, the place we went closed at ten. Yeah, all of the gas stations and and food places in Debose were not options, so we we went to Jackson. Eight at D O G. Dog. Dog. Uh solid, solid food. Um, and then after that, went to well, I think it was like Highway 191, I believe. Yeah. Um and very, very, very beautiful drive there as well. Um even at night, yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. And then the that honda civic yeah we pulled into this gas station because we needed gas and it's like it was probably like 11 or 12 at that point yeah and no one else is around 
but out of nowhere this honda civic that's like full of people like four or five people in it and an old honda civic sounds bad comes up to the gas station drives around the pumps park i think they stopped for a second but then they just left and we're both like are we about to die yeah <laughs> there there were several moments where we were like is this it <laughs> that was that was one of them um and then we made it through i don't remember where where we switched oh yeah we did we switch over at um it was in nebraska i think you got all the way to nebraska no no you I got us out of Nebraska, but you got us to Nebraska, I think. Well, no, but we're skipping over kind of the the whole thing here. Uh, you got us to Sinclair. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> what a thing to forget. Yeah, no, I, I took over at that gas station. I don't remember. And you were like, we stopped like for that switchover. But anyway, yeah. So, and yeah. I'm driving, and I was like. The battery gauge is low again, and you're, like, basically half asleep, and you're like, it'll fix itself, don't worry. And I keep driving, and it keeps dropping, and eventually you wake up again, and I was like, did it ever get that low? <laughs> and you were like, no, and then, like, the radio starts to cut out. Yeah, the headlights started <laughs> blinking with the blinkers. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, there's a gas station, and I'm like, it's 100 miles to the next town, like, we should probably stop. Yeah, and that was, uh... Well, that was, I mean, that was, that was definitely the right call, but. Yeah, it would have been worse to be stuck on the side of the highway. Yeah, so thankfully we're able to limp it to a parking spot. Uh, Yeah, as soon as I pull off the highway and the RPMs drop, though, it's like, it is not, it is not holding it together. Yeah, it's not. It starts to run really rough. Very unhappy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and there was also that guy before in, like, the Corolla that was, like, driving insane. Oh, yeah, fuck, yeah. There was just a dude, as I'm driving and, like, monitoring this, the voltmeter that's, like, keeps dropping and I'm worried about it, but I'm, like, in cruise control doing 70 or whatever, and this guy, two guys in, like, a Toyota Corolla, old one, parked in the left lane with the Canadian license plate, and they're just, like, going back and forth between, like, 55 and 85, and they passed me, like, three times. I passed them on the right, like, three times. And the whole time, I'm like, I really just want to park for a minute and let them get, like, 10 miles ahead of us. But I'm like, we can't stop. <laughs> if we stop, we're done. It's only a matter of time, yeah. Yeah, so made it to... Our... Also, the whole time, that's freaking me out. You're just asleep, and I'm like... Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would have been... I, I'm glad I was asleep for that. I, I would not have been... It wasn't happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we made it to our our home for about about ten nine hours. hours, nine ten hours. Yeah. Sinclair, Wyoming, in the parking lot of a Sinclair gas station next to a Sinclair refinery. Uh, company men, right here. Yeah, um, <laughs> we love the dinosaur. Yeah, we do. I do love the dinosaur. Um. Yeah. So that was that was a fun nine hours like as soon as we as soon as we pulled in pretty much i uh i have like roadside assistance through my insurance allegedly uh (laughs) so i like put in a request and you know usually it takes i mean i've never had issues with it when i've needed it like in nashville like it's usually pretty quick but in wyoming uh where people don't live uh 2 a.m slightly more of an issue so I put in the request at three and I just like, I was like, there's nothing I can do about this. Just went to sleep in the car, woke up at like, I don't know, f- five forty five six, and the roadside people were calling me and they're like, well, you know, we can't find anybody that wants to tow you. It's like, oh, okay. So wh- what am I paying for this for? You know, um, yeah. <laughs> like, well, but we'll give you a number of this other place and like you can call them and you can send us the receipt and like maybe we'll pay for part of it yeah. like, well okay i mean awesome. i have to get out of here somehow um and 
so yeah that was what like six or seven so i just like they're like you can put in another request or or like call these other people or like you know just basically figure it out on your own so i i put in another request for like the window between eight and ten and i also called the number that they gave me never picked up um and so 10 rolls around they they still can't find anybody and at this point you know we've been there for what seven hours and i'm you know i'm starting to lose a little bit of patience Uh, um, so i just called my my insurance agent and uh i talked to to his assistant and she was very helpful because (laughs) she like went to bat for me with the the roadside people and was basically saying what i was thinking is like you know if you're not going to do anything about this why why are we paying for this uh which love her shout out to her she's great um and then basically she was like look okay you're just you're gonna have to figure this out on your own if if those people aren't answering and like just send me the receipt and like i i should be able to take care of some of the tow and so i i did that and i i called this this other company that i had actually called before at seven and they had quoted me twelve hundred dollars so i called them again because i'm like this is my only option i've called literally every other towing company and like the that one the one that we ended up using and another one were the only ones that even answered the phones and the only the the other one that answered the phone, they're like, "Oh, we only do semis." So that was that was out. So we literally had one option, and it was to pay twelve hundred dollars to get towed to Laramie. Oh yeah, and I had wanted to get towed to the Toyota dealership because you know I I was not sure that it was the problem that it ended up being, and I was like, "Well, they'll they'll like know how to to troubleshoot it." Also, like every time I've had car trouble, it's only been a couple of times. But when I've had car trouble, like out of town you always have to go to the dealership because all the private shops are booked yeah and especially because like i know parts are not like super common for a land cruiser um and so i figure if anywhere's gonna have it it's gonna be them so i i call the toyota dealership and they're like oh yeah um you know we can let you know if anything clears up today but we're booked until july 11th yeah. So it the, still is not. The the Toyota dealership is still going through as we're recording this all of the, the things they had booked. Um but they referred me to the place that we ended up taking it. Um and so that was great. But so we're we we waited for this tow company to us after I had called them again and so finally, they're like, all right, we're on the way. And we had a very entertaining little hour and a half boat truck ride. Uh, Almost a better night's sleep than the night before in Glacier. <laughs> I was like, man, 90 minutes in a tow truck, that's going to be like a slog. And then I got in the tow truck, and about 30 seconds later, I opened my eyes, and we were there. Yeah, which while, while you were asleep, I, I was awake for some of it. But the guy told me, the tow truck driver told me, that that original tow company that uh, the roadside assistance people had told me to call had all of their trucks repossessed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's why they weren't answering the phone. It's like, well, it would have been good to know, uh, I don't know, hours ago. But anyway, we we made it to Laramie $1,200 later. Um, and... So drop the car off. At this point, we thought it was just still some like, you know, like a wiring issue or something like that. And uh, so we just, you know, we were just at the mercy of the mechanic. So we went to go get lunch. Um, went to an outstanding but empty Mexican restaurant in Laramie, Wyoming. I mean, that was a totally empty. That was a top notch burrito. Hell yeah. A Wyoming burrito, which I didn't know existed, but it's it's steak, cheese, and pico. It's it's just a California burrito without guacamole or sour cream. But honestly, yep. kind of better. 
kind I of don't better. Know. Yeah. I I feel like the the guacamole and the sour cream. Sometimes you get a little too much in there. You're like, I kind of don't want to eat any more of this. But anyway, yeah. So we did that. Went to uh the Cowboy Bar, which is on the National Register of Historic Places, which was impressive. Uh, great vibes. Met some interesting people. And then uh, not we hadn't been there long, and the guy called back, and he's like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's the alternator," <laughs> which is like, "Oh, great! I, I thought this was not going to be like the super expensive thing, but it was." Um, and he's like, "Yeah, like you might want to look at booking a hotel room," and I was like, "Ooh, yeah, I don't know. I I kind of like need to be back on Thursday," so I was like, "You know what? Like if you can." If you can get it done, like I'll I'll throw in an extra hundred. Like, okay. And he's like, he's like, I, I like I you know, I, I don't don't expect that, but like I'll see what I can do. And I was like, okay. So just hope for the best. I also asked him, I was like, Do you recommend any hotels? And he was basically like, No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we did do some looking for hotels and uh Yeah. It was basically spend two hundred and fifty dollars for a Hampton Inn, or like you're gonna be in a, a pit. Yeah, essentially, and uh, we didn't particularly want to do that. So, thankfully, uh, shout out uh, Ketz Auto Electric in Laramie, Wyoming. This podcast is sponsored by Ketz Auto Electric in Laramie, Wyoming. We uh, only had to pay eight hundred dollars for that sponsorship. Yeah, we paid for that sponsorship. Um. We just walked back there because it was like two blocks off downtown, and the cars just like running out front, and literally like neither of us can believe it. And uh, so like I go in and pay, and he's like, "All right," I'm like, "All right," you know, "Do you want to ring me up for another hundred? And he's like, "Oh, you know, if I ring you up, I'm gonna have to tax you." And I was like, oh, "Okay," like I'll just run to the ATM, and he's like, "Okay," and like you know, I told my buddy because he literally like he this guy just stand up guy called in a favor with his buddy who has a lift because he didn't have an open lift in his shop calls in a favor with his buddy who does to get this done we have no idea how he transported the car yeah i still don't understand that either uh but i'm glad they did and he's like yeah like i told my buddy like if you didn't cover it i would which first of all who does that like just salt of the earth guy um but yeah so went back Gave him a hundred dollars cash, and we were on our way back on the road. What seemed like it would be another fifteen hundred miles of, you know, incident-free travel, but <laughs> none of the incidents were were car-related from there on. But yeah, some, some interesting stuff. So I had been looking at our route, and I was like, it's like a. 20 minute detour to hit a corn the northeast corner of Colorado just an 11th state and I I noted this before the car broke and I was like we could hit that it'll be the middle of the night but like it's an 11th state that's a cool milestone for the trip but then after the car breaks down and I'm like doing the numbers and I'm like well but we get off the highway <laughs> and you're just like there's a cop behind us. And when you said it, I was just like, oh, yeah, there's a cop behind us. Whatever. I didn't know that you meant his lights were on. <laughs> and we get pulled over and we're both like, shit, I don't know. And I'm like, you should close that navigation. <laughs> <laughs> but he was cool. Apparently, you ran a stop sign. Neither of us noticed. Yeah. No, I think I, I like I, I totally that, that that probably did happen. But I was like so zapped. Yeah. Like generally that it did not register with me and i was just yeah. like willing to accept whatever he said yes <laughs> but he was chill about it i got a, i didn't even get a written warning i got a verbal no. warning yeah. um uh, cool guy he heard our story he bought it he looked in the back of the car he was like yeah that that adds up <laughs> he didn't even get the spiel about what we had just been through no i was like man if you make me pay another two hundred dollars <laughs> i'm gonna lose it you just never you just never go back to Wyoming, but it all worked out. Back on the road. Um Nebraska. Nebraska. That yeah. was where it all That was where it, it all started to mentally unravel for us. Yeah, it's dark. And I'm like looking out the window and I'm like, I just fucking see mountains. 
Yeah, out except the, for the fact that we're in Nebraska. But we're in Nebraska, and I first didn't want to say anything because I'm like, he's going to think I'm like really stoned. <laughs> but then you're like, nah, dude, I see him too. <laughs> but it was just like the like the reflection of the interior off of, of my car, like off of the windows, because the outsides of the windows are so dirty. Yes, it just like looked like a perfect curve, like a mountain, but then like all the lights in the distance and stuff it's just like we had been driving in the mountains well, for so long that also, i could just see them out there. we're skipping over north platte here oh my god yeah it was, it was still light out when we got to north platte <sighs> what was ah oh, fuck what was the thing in north platte? bat dogs oh my god it was not light out in north platte it was dark it was like it was like basically <laughs> all the way dark yeah. but it was like a little bit light but we, we stopped got there we were going to eat, right? Yeah. Yeah, we stopped to get to because that was like the I was pretty hungry. You you were getting there. Yeah. And it was, late. It was like, well, North Platte's gonna be the last place to stop for a while. So we stopped there, got off the interstate. We get off the interstate and there's this gas station called Fat Dogs and a giant sign that just says, Welcome to nowhere, or you are nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> cursed experience and then we sat stopped for like three minutes because there was like a rotating digital sign yes <laughs> and i had seen it when we were coming towards the gas station it was just a picture of hot dogs and it said girth matters and i was like what what is this and you had you didn't see it and so i stopped like in front of the digital sign for like three minutes trying to get it to come up never did and then did once we, we pulled away we got to the gas pumps, and there's apparently they sell 86 and 87 octane yes. in Nebraska, and the advertised price on the sign was 86, and it was like 50 cents cheaper than 87, which I don't understand how that works. And only at like three of the pumps. Yeah, very just that like that cursed. I, Oh, so much cursed energy in that location. So got gas and then went inside where we saw some things. We saw some things. <laughs> um, <laughs> was that where there was a dude demanding yeah. a free shower? <laughs> and the employees were just like, man, it's $10. He's like, I just bought a whole tank of gas. I bought $200 of diesel and I can't get a free shower. And she's just like, dude, I just work here. It's $10. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the souvenir shirts as well. Yeah, I got a $15 souvenir shirt. Great price. Yeah. Um, strong. Strong. Um, <laughs> you know, because I have to remember sometimes that that place was real. Yeah. Or was it? I don't. We, I wish it wasn't, but I'm, it would also be scary if it wasn't. We walked out, and these guys on the patio that I don't even think worked there. No. One, one of them just shouts, welcome to nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, very, like, kind of, like, ominously, but, like, cheerfully. Yeah, we had to... We had to leave, and then we went we had to leave. Canes. We went to a raising canes. They raising gave us canes. So much extra stuff that we didn't pay for. They gave us like four extra tenders <laughs> and two extra toasts. It was. I mean, I appreciated it, but like, yeah, didn't need them. No, so did go to waste. But yeah, and then more of the fun one side of the highway construction, and that about. That about did me in. So we switched off again. And I actually slept. Yeah. I drove through some uh, scary, scary one line, one lane sections of the highway. Um, I also like two or three times got to the point where I was like, I, <laughs> I'm going to fall asleep. So I just pulled over at a rest stop and slept for like an, like an hour, hour and a half a couple of times. Dude, uh, I, I did not sleeping. even wake up for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was out, out. I went to sleep in Nebraska, in like the middle of Nebraska, and then I woke up at the Missouri state line. Yeah, <laughs> you finally woke up. I was like, "We're out of Nebraska. You sk you missed Iowa entirely." 
I need to sleep for a little bit. Yeah, no, that was that was blessed timing. I didn't want to have to like mentally deal with Iowa again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was worried about the that part of the drive, but I mean, I I got us I got us a little ways. I didn't crash. I slept when I needed to. Yeah. No, you you were a lifesaver on the the back half of the trip for sure. And then I think their next stop was St. Louis. Yeah. We had to check out the venue. Um, yeah. It looks like a sick venue. Val is saying that we're going to die there, but I think we'll be fine. It did strike me that if it is hot, like it, it could be kind of like an oven, but. Maybe, but it's just like there's no way it's worse than the sun beating right down on you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sad I'm missing out. You have a sick shirt for it. Um, Thank you. Nobody's bought it. Yeah. Well, maybe they should change that. Like, buy the shirt. It's sick. Buy the shirt. I'll have a couple to bring. Um. Yeah. So then, St. Louis. Um. Not. We we stopped for lunch. Had a delicious sandwich in an industrial park. It was in an industrial park. Yeah. It was it was cursed. Yeah. But. But delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I ate it in about fifteen seconds. It was impressive. And you discovered that uh Philly cheesesteaks should be sh- served with au jus. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, which now I feel Whiz wit au jus. I feel like kind of upset that I didn't try that, but I was like, Oh, Italian sub sounds great right now. It was solid, yeah. Yeah, and then so went to see the venue, went to see the or I mean, we just yeah. cursed by. venue also because it's attached to the practice facility for the St. Louis Blues, and it's in the same like parking area as a casino. Yeah, like a not like a not a Wyoming casino. Like no, <laughs> yeah. Also, North Dakota. I mean, South Dakota, or was it Montana? South Dakota, it's like Wyoming and Montana. Every single uh establishment was a gas station, bar, restaurant, grocery store, and casino. Yeah, quite the combination. They they're really space space efficient out there. Uh, yeah, but no, like an actual, we're only going to build one place, full blown casino and hotel deal. Yeah, like skyscraper. Yeah, if I uh, yeah, correctly. yeah, pretty pretty cursed venue, but you know, I think it's going to be a great show. I'm sad I'm missing it. Also saw, I guess, the venue for the swap meet. Uh, yeah, the lake across yeah, the street. Very cool. Um. And then we managed to make it around that like insane traffic jam with that crash. Oh yeah. For gas. Yeah. Yeah. It was like I think you pulled off for gas maybe or something and then like as we pull off these ambulances go by and it's just when we finally got back on the highway we were right in front of the crash and the highway was totally blocked. Yeah, it was it was real bad. Um and then I drove us to like not that much further, and then yeah, we were we were back in Nashville in one piece with one fully functioning car and two mostly functioning humans. Yeah, I'm almost fully back. Yeah, and I actually today I felt like I was gonna die, and I was like, is this like something <laughs> catching up to me? <laughs> Thankfully, or hopefully not. Hopefully not. <laughs> but yeah, that was. I mean, for real, like, trip of a lifetime. I, am, I can't wait to do it again. Same. Um, and anyway, this has been an hour This is a long a pod. Yep. This is a long one. Uh, but yeah, again, shout out to, um, to everybody that sent us money. I mean, like... Shout literally. out to everybody who was there. Yeah, you, you have no idea, like, how much that means to us um and and how big of a burden you've lifted off of my shoulders um also when i go to st louis and chicago we're gonna rent a car that's that's the right move make sure that ask the ask the Renault the the employee at the counter be like hey did you check the alternator on this reason <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure, please. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we go out to the rental car. It's a 2007 Land Cruiser. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty good rental. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I wouldn't complain. Yeah. 
but yeah, uh, thank you everybody. Um, yeah, and thank you so much. It, it really means the world. I, you know, I don't know if anybody's still listening, but like, I can't wait to see you in Colorado, Minneapolis, Nashville, any of the other places I might be going. Um, your support means the world. I love you. Thank you. It's all for the community. All of. I have I have never done anything more important in my whole life. So thank you all. Yeah. All right. All right. Unexpected fourth pod.